Welcome everyone to the road to Centralia, Pennsylvania. Check this out. This used to be a major thoroughfare leading into a town where a fire erupted directly underneath the patrons and the homes of the town in 1962. I'm going to show you what's left. Join me, shall you? Shortly after the fire broke out, down below the surface of the earth, the government stepped in and took over what they call eminent domain, forcing the residents to move out. Most of them did, except for the mayor, who actually still resides here, as well as a small handful of other residents. Is this poisonous? The median has spawned up some sort of weird foliage right here in the middle. But look, gold. We found gold. We found gold. Foliage. The birds are chirping. The sun is out. The greenery of the air and the graffiti of the road. I really have no idea why I said the greenery of the air. The greenery of the trees that's protruding into the air. I think I'm getting delirious. Clearly, Sinbad was here. <laughs> Not sure if you can see them or not, but check it out. There's two couches back in the woods. Off in the woods, two couches. Very, very unusual. It's pretty wild to think that years ago, people drove up and down this hill, going into work, going into town, going in to survive, to live, to shop, to worship. Now there's nothing. You can see how dilapidated and graffitied up the road leading into town is. This is probably the biggest hole and gash right here on this main highway leading into town. Pretty crazy that right down below a mine fire is burning and if it was cool out, if it was the coldness and crispness of the winter air, you would be able to see steam protruding up from right down here. Steam protruding up from... Wait a second. Something feels really weird while I'm sitting here. Something feels really weird while I'm sitting here. Do not sit here. Do not sit here. Someone tried to warn me. Check out that little hump in the middle of the road. Imagine careening your car down out of Centralia, getting off work, commuting home, and then bam, hitting that. It's almost like a ramp. That's some pretty dangerous stuff right there. Do you think that was like that when the town originally was here? Or did this little festering bubble memento pop up after the fact? What do you think? Why did that hump become created. That is weird.
Another interesting fact about Centralia, it has no postal code. The government took that away from them as well. You can see the old guardrail going along here, protecting people that are driving down this road. Of course, you can tell now, no one drives down this road. Oh man, I don't know how I missed that. It blended right in. It's camouflage. Blended right in. You might be asking yourself, what happens when you actually get to the town of Centralia? Well, the answer is really a whole lot of nothing. There is some debris left and some remnants of where the fire once started and a cemetery off in the distance. But most of these scraps of concrete and debris are what's left from when the fire once started here and crept down below the surface of the earth. But in reality, Centralia really is not that exciting, other than the road that led in, the highway that leads into Centralia, really is about the only thing worthwhile coming out here to see. Unless you come in the winter time, when you can see the steam rising up from the ground. This is the area here. This is actually pretty cool, though. Shoes that are burned. So that's something. But I don't know how often shoes are actually left out here. But that's probably the coolest thing I found while I wandered around this area that I guess used to be at one point a scrapyard or a junkyard that caught fire that ended up spreading down below. You can see an overlook of the town there, abandoned roads that no longer have houses or churches or movie theaters like they once did when Centralia was a real, legit, working town. Now there's just empty roads, lots of debris, this star, looking down the hill, you can see these pipes that they've actually put up to help release the steam. This one actually says, do not back over with your tour bus. So if you bring a tour bus, definitely do not smash into that. Looking around a little bit more, here's another pile of rubble. This is pretty much the extent of what's left here in Centralia. Don't come expecting big houses, a lot of abandonment. There is this cool rock wall, which is actually pretty neat. This fence and a tree, and lots and lots and lots of roads. I cannot stress this enough. Basically, it's just roads with lots of empty lots, warehouses and buildings and businesses used to be, and this painted tree stump. You can see the foundation there, of where a home or a business used to be. Now we're getting basically to the end of the video, the nitty gritty other roads. These are non-highway roads like the graffiti road you saw at the beginning of the video. These are all the roads stretching through Centralia. One road after another road after another road after another road. Dozens and dozens and dozens of roads all out basically in the middle of this abandoned town. But don't be fooled, the most exciting thing you will see out here at Centralia, other than this tree that has a sign on it that says wood, the only really exciting thing you're going to see if you make the trip out to Centralia, which I really highly would recommend not doing unless you're in the area, because everything exciting has probably been shown in this video or other YouTubers' videos. Lots of people have been out here. It's become kind of a tourist attraction. The best thing you're going to see is this. The highway full of graffiti. Question everything. Some people write graffiti that makes no sense. And this makes no sense. But thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. See ya. Huh. Seems legit.
that sun is really beating down on me and making me kind of loopy. Really makes me think, judging by all these trees and greenery on either side of me, if I was a plant, would I want to be on the side of a road, an abandoned town in Pennsylvania, or would there be another state I'd want to live in? Would I want to be in a place that was flourishing with nourishment of the people that resided in the town? Or I would, why do I want to, or would I want to be in a place that has holes in the ground and a fire burning down below me? If I'm a green subject matter that spawns up from the earth that needs nutrients, the last thing I need is a fire burning down below me. I need water. I need water, not the sun, not the fire. I need H2O, aqua. I'm just rambling.